Well, hello, uh, everyone. I'm here today with Kathy uh, Patterson from Ally Financial, the Chief Human Resources Officer at Ally Financial. Now, Ally Financial is a leading financial institution, so I'm, I'm sure you're seeing a lot of changes around how people view working in the workplace in a more virtual world. Uh, what are some observations that, that, that you might be able to share with us about that? Adam, the one thing at Ally that I think we, um, we've done well is there's just an acknowledgement that their home life and work life has always been intertwined. And most of us live a very full and somewhat sloppy life. And work doesn't necessarily end when you pull into uh, your driveway. And I, I have to say that at this particular time, um, there can't be more of a truer statement in terms of how entwined people feel their lives are. Um, and some of the observations we have is everyone's experiencing um, this time very differently. Some are thrilled to be working from home and love the autonomy and love the flexibility, while others miss and crave that interaction from their teammates. And some are just, you know, really struggling. They have, you know, multiple worlds under one roof, and one of it is homeschooling their kids. So, you know, we've seen a variety of um, experiences. Employees are all sort of, you know, going through a different sort of change curve. And, um, you know, I, the best thing we're trying to do at Ally as HR professionals is really understanding and looking at it from a lens of caring and trying to get a better sense of where are those pressure points and how can we acknowledge it, be empathetic and provide the right level of support. Um, I, you know, personally, you know, I, I have three children and my husband's working and my house has never been so crowded. And so, you know, I, this has been a time in which I think it's really drawn a level of empathy from leaders of all levels to really think about how to manage and support um, their employee group. Talk a little bit about empathetic leadership then, you know, what does that, what does that mean to Ally Financial and, and the importance of empathy there? I've been asked a couple of times the question of how are you creating a level of engagement and connection? How are leaders leading during this window of time? And one of the, the best lessons and values that I think has been created is that during this time, everyone's going through the experience themselves. You know, everyone is sort of being seen on more of a human platform as opposed to the professional or the person that sits in the corner office. Um, so I think the playing field, first of all, has been evened out. Um, but secondly, I think we have spent a lot of time as a leadership team and as an HR team uh, really trying to listen and hear the varying viewpoints that are out there and holding leaders somewhat responsible for sharing that voice and coming forth and giving us suggestions um, and really pushing a degree of flexibility. Uh, you know, right now you have a lot of working, um, working mothers and fathers who are trying to balance their day job as well as trying to get their kids on Zoom. So really trying to create that, that structure, that culture that encourages our leaders to engage in those conversations, have those point, uh, you know, conversation points asking about how are you doing? You know, what, what, do you need any additional support? And so, you know, on the onset, um, there was an enormous amount of concern that we had a lot of leaders that had never had to lead in a virtual setting. Um, and after a couple sort of, you know, trainings, educations about what you need to do to be providing support, um, we've been extremely impressed with how our leadership has sort of stepped up and is listening to their, their teammates and escalating where they think there might be opportunities for HR to provide additional um, support or additional programs that can, can lend assistance. Tell me about, you know, that, that move to, to online. What was the, what was the experience at, at, at Ally? And, you know, what, was the, what were some of the, the, the big challenges that you faced? At the core, our culture, our people is just the driver. I do believe that our, our, the, what makes Ally stand out is our culture and it provides us a competitive advantage. And we talk about it. We talk about our values. We talk about health and safety. And there's probably never been a point in time that the organization has been tested to really demonstrate their commitment. And um, the beauty is that in that moment of crisis, the senior leadership team, and in particular, our CEO, um, Jeff Brown, was very clear. 
we are going to get all employees home. And at that time, we, we only had roughly about one third of our employee population that was enabled to work from home. So, you know, the, the first mad dash was to get employees working from home. And, at, you know, we, we have pictures where it sort of looks like a McDonald's drive through where employees literally were pulling up in their cars and taking their, their desktops home with them because we didn't have laptops ready for them. So there was um, a sense of urgency to first get employees home. And at this point right now where we sit, we have 99% of our workforce home. And, you know, our guiding post at, the, at that time was the health and safety of our employees is paramount. And from that point, you know, we were very quick to look at adjusting our benefits. So if an employee does contract COVID, what does that mean for their health care? What does that mean for disability? We were having employees that expressed an enormous amount of concern about just sort of, you know, financial matters, if in the event they came down with COVID, what did that mean for a leave? So we, we did our best to quickly sort of change our benefit plans, offered an immediate leave assistance for employees. Um, shortly thereafter, um, we gave employees a $1,200 stipend, um, those employees to help them to work from home. So additional Wi-Fi costs, the additional printing, the electricity. So um, additional support was provided there and ongoing communication. We still do every other week communication from our CEO, giving employees an update of where we stand relative to the pandemic. And more recently, a lot of the other sort of challenges that I think we've all been faced with throughout 2020. We've had to work with an enormous amount of unknowns, um, a lot of ambiguity. We've had to make some very quick sort of decisions. Not everything has gone perfectly. But um, there's no doubt that we've demonstrated a level of care and concern for our employees. One of the, the greatest lessons learned for me is we were really concerned about how do we continue to drive interconnectivity of our employee groups. And um, we have eight employee resource groups. And we started to host together um, WebExes that brought like teams together, like all the veterans, African-American ERGs. And it gave us an enormous amount of insights in terms of some of the struggles that um, these select groups were sort of experiencing during the pandemic, which gave us additional feedback for how to provide support. I'm giving an example, um, our veterans ERGs. It's very common for many veteran employees to um, experience PTSD suffer from depression. Um, and so we were really quick to sort of roll out a, a call tree. So every single day, somebody was making a phone call to two or three different people in that ERG to provide a level of support and connection. Um, so those are some of the, I think, creative things that we've done to provide support and um, recognize where our employees are at this very trying time. What do you think sort of long-term, you know, this does for Ally Financial's culture? So Adam, you know, we recently did an employee engagement uh, survey this past June, um, and we questioned whether or not we wanted to do it. And I think the thought was, God, the environment's so very different. Um, and, and behind the scenes, we're also rolling out a series of sort of pulse surveys uh, online on demand for employees to give us feedback. Um, our employee engagement scores went up seven points. And they went up because of the level of support and resources and the connectivity and the sense of belonging that they, they felt in terms of our response. And it demonstrates that you know, this isn't just a company that um, puts these beautiful words out there that employees come first and we care and it's about the care factor or driving personal and professional connections. You know, uh, we were tested and I, I think we, we've demonstrated um, a level of commitment um, to those words. You alluded to this a, a few moments ago. It's not just the, the, the COVID crisis. There are more crises, you know, more upheaval. Diversity inclusion, you know, has really sort of risen to the fore. How have you, have you been managing that, um, you know, in the middle of a pandemic as well? You know, so, so what's the experience been like that? What are some of the innovations maybe that, that, that you're working on on that front? So yeah, 2020 has definitely been a very unusual and challenging year. And, um, I, you know, I feel like uh, the social unrest was um, one more item that we needed to be really sensitive to as it relates to in the way in which our employees were um, feeling in light of the George Floyd. Um, we do have operations sitting in Minneapolis. Um, you know, fortunately, uh, DNI has been part of our, our, our fabric. Um, we have uh, been on this journey for at least four or five years. 
we have made a lot of progress. Um, we, you know, we have a very broad definition for diversity and inclusion. And um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, eight employee resource groups that are open to, um, to all employees across that have like a real clear sort of, you know, focus in terms of how they're supporting and driving representation and engagement within their area. But um, there's no doubt that um, there was a need for us to act quickly. And one of the things that we've done that I think um, created um, a, a greater level of understanding uh, across the various employee groups is uh, a Let's Talk About It series. And that was um, open series where employees would sign up and um, participate in a dialogue about what was occurring around racial injustice um, and the emotions were raw. I mean, Adam, there, um, you want to talk about bringing your whole self into work. Um, these were sessions with, you know, anywhere between 25 to 30 employees really talking about their personal experiences. Um, black mothers talking about the fear for the safety of their sons and, you know, what it, what that might mean. You know, it was voluntary, so it wasn't a mandatory session. And um, we have close to about 8,500 employees. We had 4,000 attend those sessions. And each one had a little bit of a different flavor. Um, but, you know, that was one thing that we did rather quickly, sort of in response, was to create a container and allow employees to engage in conversations. And since then, we've done a lot as it relates to broadening um, education on very sensitive topics. We've also have put together um, additional cross-functional teams to really look at what we can do more so for financial and social um, equity. And is there more that we can be doing internally with our customer base, with our suppliers to you know, lift and do more for our black and brown employees? So that's the, the next phase. Um, but the, you know, the, the beauty is I think people are having conversations and people are listening and the dialogue has been healthy. Does it feel at, at Ally like it's a very different organization than it was six months ago? Or? It is. Um, I, uh, that's a great question. Uh, do I feel like it's a different organization? Um, it, there are definitely um, clearer priorities. So I, I think the culture is probably what has positioned us well to respond quickly um, to the events in 2020. So I, from that standpoint, the, the sense of connectivity, the belonging is still there. But there has been a focus on essentialism and a greater focus around, do we really need to do that? Does that really make sense? Does it, you know, so our priorities have shifted. The financial plan that we once put in place at the beginning of the year looks very different. Um, so the, the work that we're engaged in um, and, the, and the thought process around it um, is different. But I would say, the connectivity that you have and sort of the value system has remained somewhat, it has it remained sort of the, you know, the backbone of the organization. It's probably been strengthened, in a, if anything, Adam. Uh, so we've, uh, at Exec Online, we've had the honor of partnering with, with you through our accelerated development program. You know, uh, we'd love to know, you know, just how, you know, has working with Exec Online, prioritizing development for this you know, critical population that you're focused on, you know, really helped Ally, you know, navigate uh, the crisis. And we've been extremely impressed with the Exec Online program. It has been a, uh, a great uh, tool, education, uh, to expose our leaders to thought leaders. It's been a great way to invest in high potential leaders, broaden their mindsets on, you know, key topics. And it's also uh, created a level of cross-organizational collaboration as we've brought these high potential teams together. So there's been some outstanding byproducts and we've seen some great results and we have yet to have, um, you know, one, one employee go through the program with one piece of criticism of what we could do other than maybe bring them together more frequently. So, you know, the program has been great in terms of shaping our, um, our future leaders. I think the, the other part that's been wonderful is there's been so much that we've had to suspend as a result of you know, the lack of face-to-face -face engagements. And so the fact that the program's virtual was a wonderful way to continue to invest within our, with our teammates. Um, and many of the leaders that are on, that's on the, the, you know, the front lines right now sort of driving our response you know, participated previously. So um, there's no doubt that there's been some great learnings from the program that has helped us sort of shape 
that next level leadership. How do you think that that this crisis, you know, kind of changes how you view, uh, uh, if it does, you know, kind of leadership development and how you're going to approach that going forward? Uh, God, Anna, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to take your question a little broader. There hasn't been anything um, within HR that we haven't had to reimagine and think about doing differently. You know, how do we hire? How do we onboard? How do we bring people into the workplace that's never even been in the workplace? How do we continue to interview and bring somebody in that we've never had any contact with? Um, you know, we had a class of about uh, 120 interns that we wanted to follow through on our commitment. So, how do we create a, an experience for them? that um, allowed them to better themselves, especially in a year in which I think everything got canceled for them. So, um, you know, a training and development it, it was an, another item that had to be quickly reshifted from face-to-face -to, -face to online. And um, I would say, if anything, it's been a great way to sort of catch, I think, corporate America up to speed um, in terms of the way in which people learn, you know, more of a distributed learning model, more sort of in chunks, invites, um, the ability to bring people together virtually. And so, you know, I, I think it's forced us to sort of revisit and catch up in terms of how development should be. Now, that's not to say that there's not opportunities for face-to-face -face training. And there are topics that are definitely probably um, better to be trained that way. But our default was always face-to-face. As opposed to sort of thinking about how we can do it virtually, and you know, there's there's no doubt as we move forward, the ability to expose our um, teammates to programs that bring people from across the world together virtually, uh, thought leaders that they would not normally be exposed to. It's just it's you know I think it's opened our eyes, and I think you'll see con us to continue on this platform, um, but recognizing that there will be classes that will be probably better served face to face. But even our you know our frontline training that originally we told ourselves that you know no collectors need to be in the office to learn how to do this to sit next to another collector. We've learned how to do that virtually um, as a result of this pandemic. So it's it has forced us. I talked about in uh, essentialism earlier, but it's also forced us to really think about how to become more digital, how can we be a little bit more efficient with our resources? You know, what have you learned personally, you know, as, as you've, you know, kind of been directing all of this, I'm presuming you've directed most of this from your own home, you know, as, as, as you know, um, you've been going forward, but what, what, have you, what have you sort of taken personally? The work has been, it's probably been more stress and more heaviness on my shoulders in the, in the last um, six or seven months than I've experienced over my career. And it's probably because of the fact that there wasn't a clear blueprint. There wasn't somebody to reach out to, to sort of that, you know, has wisdom on this. I, I've joked a couple of times at them. They're like, what's your biggest lesson learned? I'm like, our pandemic plan was not very good. You know what I mean? Like we all have these great sort of business continuity plans. And, um, you know, I, you know, I've looked at it once and I'm like, okay, this is not going to get us anywhere. Um, so, you know, for me, I, one, I think gaining greater comfort in terms of working with ambiguity, recognizing the data that I have, being clear on what my priorities need to be, the significance of slowing down and communicating um, and being more mindful. So I, I, personally, I think I've strengthened those muscles, the comfort in terms of working with ambiguity, making quick decisions, recognizing it's not going to be perfect, but, you know, 80% is better than nothing. And so that mindset has helped. I think it's also, um, for me, I, you know, I think I, I have a, a deep appreciation uh, for teachers. You know, I mean, I, I'll be honest now, I'll step back. I look at teachers out there and our essential workers, and um, I have such a deeper appreciation for what they do. I, I look at the way in which I'm trying to homeschool my kids and engage with them. So those are those are some of my you know immediate sort of takeaways. I, I do believe that all in all, we will end up better at the end of this pandemic. And I keep reminding myself, this is just a moment in time. We will be stronger, we're resilient. So there's um, a point of sort of um, looking for the gratitude and looking for the good. Um, and, you know, we've talked about a few things that I think, you know, that has brought about as a result of this pandemic. I mean, we're, I think we're working smarter. Um, I think, you know, some people are learning how to create greater boundaries. So there's, there's some good that's gonna, I think, come from this really unusual year. Thank you uh, again, Kathy. Uh, for for participating in our our series stories from the HR front lines and you know really enjoyed having this conversation with you today.